Hey everyone, Steve Wontrop with Collider, and we are here at the Cinema Center at Marble, which uh, is our studio at TIFF, and I want to give a huge thank you to them for being an awesome partner and having an awesome restaurant here in the city. Uh, I'm here with Simon ba uh, Baker for Limbo, uh, his film at the Toronto Film Festival. I got to start with the most important question up front. Uh, we spoke 2017 here, you directed a really good movie, and I've been waiting for the next one. And I'm still waiting. So can we just start with um, when are you directing again? Uh, it's not official, but I'm I'm I w I'm planning on directing something early next year. So when you say not official, does it mean you're waiting on the financing? Yeah, I mean that's how it goes. It's the film business, and right. particularly with independent film, it's not like you know you've got to you've got to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Sure. Can I ask? And I know it's not official, but is it an Australian story? Mm -hmm. Is it um, what what can you tease without saying anything? I don't really want to say anything. <laughs> OK, I, I won't put you on the spot, but I'm, I'm happy or at least um, yeah. that uh, that it's something that you're really trying to make happen. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, OK, I'll, I'll let you off the hook. I want to follow up. Can you give me a title or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is my job. I could, but it's more fun not to because, right. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's we, a little bit. I'm a bit being a bit sadistic. No, no, no. It's um, it's it's, uh, it's 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 based on a book called The Shepherd's Heart. Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving me a little there info. What's funny is I uh, I don't ask anybody's personal. I don't care what people are doing in their personal lives, but anything they're doing work related to me is fair game, and I will dig as far as I can dig. But I, I couldn't tell you who you're dating or your fa you know what I mean. Mm. I anyway. Just, right. Yeah. You know, uh, anyway, so jumping into, I thought your film was so well done and restrained and beautiful to look at and I could keep on going. Which film are you talking about? My film? Breath? Oh, sorry. I'm talking about Limbo. Oh, Limbo. Yeah. Limbo. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we already talked about Breath. We, yeah, we're moving past ago. that. Good. You know, let the ego drop. I'm joking. Yeah, thanks. Uh, but with, with this, um, talk, I, no one watching this interview yet will have seen the movie and I hate doing it, but uh, like, how have you been describing the film to friends and family? Uh, I think the film's a meditation on the inefficiencies of the justice system when it comes to first Australians in Australia. Was it, the script is, um, I really thought it was so well done. Uh, was it the script that immediately pulled you in? Like, uh, Look, it, it's really, you know, the, the, the Australian film industry, is a, it's a very small industry and, and there's some... Uh, great benefits of that, the intimacy of what the industry is. So it was a, a couple of producers that I'd worked with before in a film called High Ground, um, uh, Bunya Productions. And the director, writer, director, Ivan Sen is someone that I'd met a long time ago. And we, we had a plan very early on when he'd just finished film school, sort of in the mid nineties that we were going to try and do a film together, but it didn't work out. And he went on and made a couple of different films and he's, he's an auteur in the truest sense, whereas he, he, he writes, he directs, he's a cinematographer, he cuts the films, he does the score. So, uh, I was, I was really curious about him as an artist to work with him, um, and his process. And, and we made the, the film, um, in 16 days. And so I was on board pretty early. Um, and it was a, it was a combination of the producers that were doing it, the subject matter, Ivan, obviously, um, and the experience of working with him. And I liked the story. I was, I was, I was very curious about the story and the way he wanted to go about how, how he was going to shoot the film. Well, one of the things is um, it's a really big departure in terms of your look for the film. Mm -hmm. Tattoos, different kind of haircut. Um, and I'm curious, I don't know how well known you are in Australia, but being um, that kind of change of appearance, did you find yourself being able to be more anonymous? Did you enjoy that kind of appearance going out in public? I didn't really think about whether or not I was enjoying that appearance when I was in public, but I... Definitely, I think, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a, a really obvious answer, but I think a lot of actors um, like the opportunity to step outside of the way they're perceived. Um, or, or, you know, obviously I, I was on a very successful television show, you know, in the 2000s or through to about 2015, a couple of quite successful TV shows. So, um, 
those those network television shows once they're sold around the world they're very uh pervasive they get they get into people's psyche so so for a lot of people uh i guess it's it's it's, it's very different to see me play a different kind of character yeah. and it's hard to get those opportunities really as an actor like people you know you, you, you i remember i did a film years ago called the devil was prada and then after that uh you know i i the film was very successful and and i was getting offered a lot of films to play that same character i mean there's a lot of times where hollywood doesn't really have a great imagination when it comes to casting uh but um i was really fortunate with ivan he'd sort of been really supportive of me of me as an actor for a long time and um was interested in sort of pushing me a bit and i was interested as most actors are, I think, to be pushed and challenged a bit. I've, I've uh, seen Brad Pitt talk about the fact that he loves playing beat up characters or band-aids or whatever it is, because it allows you to shed your skin almost. And I would imagine it's the same with you in this, with the way, you, you know, you have an addiction, you are completely different than the way you actually look. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I look, I, you know externally every everyone works in different ways but i i think i don't i don't know that i necessarily i don't necessarily come at it from an external standpoint i kind of come at it from a more of an internal standpoint and then and then those external things are just sort of adornments that support whatever's happening internally but i'm really starting to sound like a wanker now um, the thing you mentioned is uh, you shot this in 16 days. Uh, talk a little bit about what it's like as an actor knowing you really do have to nail your shit every day. Like there's no wasted time on this. Yeah, look, I, I've been doing it for a, a, f a fair amount of time now. So I, I, uh, I like to have a really good time when I'm working and I find I can have a really good time if I'm very well prepared. Um, and if I'm relaxed and I think really the key to it is to be relaxed. And I think, uh, I've settled into that just f through the, the, the decades that I've been doing it now. So, um, yeah, you do. And with a film like this, very small cast, very, very small crew, like the most people we ever had on set was maybe 15 um at once that was like the most so there's a real intimacy in working that way can i ask do you enjoy uh being on a set like that because that is very intimate for a film for any set. yeah i love it it's great it's great you, you know you you you're you're cutting out um the risk of communication getting diluted sure if you know what i mean 100 percent. so you know uh the, the idea of you telling someone, asking someone a question, and then that person asking the next, the, the reinterpretation of that question each time you end up getting a sandwich when you ask for, uh, you know, a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, that can happen on a film set. And, 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 and I guess, and, and, and that, that same concept can be taken into the, uh, into the creative. Well, I mean, that's where it's most important. Whereas uh, when you're talking, when I was talking with Ivan, I'm talking to, I'm talking to the writer, the director, the, this, I'm talking to the filmmaker and he's inviting me into the process. So together we are collectively making the film. Um, and there's, and there's, there's no, um, there's no pixels being dropped in communication. So, uh, that, that, that's, that's helpful. That's wonderful. And also the economic way in which he wanted to shoot it, uh, because I have directed before and I have an understand, I have a pretty strong understanding of camera. Um, I could play to what he wanted to do uh with with the aesthetic and the style of the piece how much when you're inhabiting a character like the one in limbo where uh are you able to when you leave set can you just shut it off and become simon again or do you carry a piece when you're shooting with you so it's easy to turn on like and maybe i'm getting too analytical about this but i'm just curious how you like to work when you're making a film like this where you're playing a character so different to who you are yeah it, it's different every time for me. I don't, I don't, you know, I, 
I'm not, uh, everyone approaches it in a very different ways. There's a lot of people that are very studied and studious about the way they approach work um, and a character. This one, I, I, I drove three and a half thousand kilometers out to where we were shooting from Sydney. I've got a little, I've got a, a, an old a, a VW transporter. That was my trailer. And I drove that out and camped on the way. And during that process of four days camping on my own out there, I just sort of was really processing the character. Uh, and I had been thinking about the character intermittently over about a year or so when Ivan and I first started talking about the project. Uh, and then and then it got to a certain point where we were there one day in Cooperpedia pre-production and Ivan picked a, picked the camera up and we were doing some um, hair and makeup stuff and wardrobe and he picked the camera up and we went out to one of the locations which was just in the town. Everything was just all, all practical locations. Nothing was built um, and nothing was – pretty much nothing was dressed. So it was really what you see on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Ivan's – He's quite remarkable. He's a, he's a photographer first and foremost, and he photographed all of the locations and he'd made the decision to shoot it, you know, monochromatically. Um, and we went out with the camera and he put the camera on sticks and threw a lens up and it, something just happened and, and the whole physical nature of the character sort of clicked in. And and then it's just about hanging on to that and trusting that and... and, and um, clicking that in but no I don't I don't go home apart from the smoking because I had to smoke a lot uh and I'm and I, I don't I'm not really a smoker I mean I'll, I'll smoke a cigarette here and there but I I had to be very familiar with smoking and I don't really you know I can I can always I'm always looking for authenticity when I'm watching a film and particularly a story like this is it's it's dead if it doesn't have authenticity um, Ivan's an authentic filmmaker. The story is a very authentic story, um, and, and it and it needed that kind of commitment to it. So I, I had to look like I smoked. So I smoked cigarettes a lot, which was, which was, um, <laughs> you know, not great. But I, I was going to say that the type. The <laughs> I'm thing, glad it's over. Yeah, I was going to say what I'd be most nervous about because I have an addictive personality is, yeah. like you know it's all great for the few weeks you're filming, but then, okay, cameras are stopped. How quickly can I stop doing this? Yeah. How yeah. long did it take? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a struggle. Oh yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, but also so that's okay. Like, it's not like I wasn't, I wasn't doing smack. <laughs> sure. But tobacco is fucking the devil. I mean, it, it is poison, you yeah. know, it's, yeah. it's hard. And the thing about it is, and not to, dive into this rabbit hole but it, it rewires your brain chemistry and makes mm. it very difficult to quit mm. so mm. you know it's not just you it's mm. you're battling it's hard yeah you know um so I'm, I'm almost out of time with you what does it mean it's a little generic and i apologize but like this your film is premiering at the toronto film festival i love this place you've been here before you know this festival mm. what does it mean for you for a film like this true indie to mm. to be here and being part of this well we're lucky that we're here uh, you know, lucky that we could get a waiver um, to come and support the film, um, you know, and, uh, you know, privileged to uh, – look, I'm very privileged in the sense that for the last sort of – since I made Breath in Australia in 2016, I've lived in Australia and primarily worked in Australia, which is, you know, on on very independent films outside of the studio system, which is – it's a great privilege to be able to work in that way, um, but to be here is it, it's it's good because I I, I like you know the, the, there was a time when Australian films felt um, quite parochial uh, and and didn't necessarily travel well uh, unless they were unless they were potentially kind of mocking Australian culture in some way um, and I, and I think and that's not to dis discredit any of the Australian films that had great success internationally, but very few did. So it's always, it's always um, a great honour and privilege to have a truly Australian story 
be seen by uh, international audiences. It played it. It played at Berlin, which was which was really uh, an exciting festival to to go to um, for its European premiere, and then to be here. I have a great history with Toronto um, as an actor as well as a director. So uh, I think it's I think it's really good, and I, and, and I think there'll be I think there'll be a a, a real nice understanding that the audience will have a Canadian audience will have with this film. Uh, my last thing, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely out of time, I really like the way the, the film is photographed and his choice for a lot of two shots where he placed the camera. You mentioned he's a photographer, but could you sort of talk about the cinematography of the film because it's very good. Yeah, uh, what's great about Ivan is very considered uh, and, that, and that puts someone like me really, I'm, quite, I'm hyper vigilant, so I'm scanning a lot of the time when I'm on a film set and thinking about a lot of different things, um, which can be a problem for me <laughs> internally. But um, Ivan's, he's, he's very considered with his whole approach to, to, to the way he makes a film and, and it's reflected in the, the economy of his shots and, and the, way, the way he shoots something. And, you know, he, he comes from most stories first of all from a, a sense of place and that place Cooper Petey was was really strong and long in his mind before he even wrote this film uh, to to uh, construct a story around that place a specific place so um, I love I, I, f I find that aspect of cinema very exciting when when I can go to the movies and it's a portal into this this world that I have an experience I haven't been to. I mean, it almost feels sci science fiction. You know, it feels it feels like a lunar landscape at times. That landscape in Cooper Pity. and his choice to shoot it in black and white, I think, was was a very bold choice given that in color it's quite spectacular out there too. But we've we've seen so much of that red dirt Australian outback to see it in a monochromatic um, palette. It, it sort of pops the pops the drama off the screen in a different way. Performances can be very subtle. Um, anyway, I, oh sorry, I'll wrap it on. No, 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 please. I I could keep on going, but because the people haven't seen the movie yet, it's really hard to talk specifics yeah, beyond yeah, like it, no. It's like you know we're we're teasing the audience on why you should go see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but you know like I can't. There's so many things I want to talk about specifics mm, mm, in the third mm. act, which cannot Outback touch. Noir is what right. they. It's been. Uh, in Australia, they a lot of the critics refer to it as uh, and his and his sort of f films that Ivan makes, Mystery Road, Goldstone. Uh, they sort of coined it as Outback Noir. It's actually a good term, you know. Yeah. Uh, listen, on that note, I got to stop with you, and I'm just going to say sincerely, it's great to see you. Yeah. Congrats on being part of Toronto, and I really look forward to you directing again. Great. Thanks, on that note, uh, keep on tuning into Collider for more interviews. Uh, thank you so much.